start this with um, truerel 0.15. And this is me, and you've seen me for a while already now since you're on the stream. So yes, uh, this is my workplace. I work for Wolf SSL. That's my site. That's my Mastodon account. Follow me on that for curl stuff. So since truerel is a new thing, I just wanted to you know, emphasize that truerel is a little command line tool in the sort of spirit of TR. So it's for parsing and manipulating URLs, translating or transpose. I looked at that up exactly, what, what the TR tool, what they mean with TR, and that's actually what it says for that. And it, uh, the truerel website is on curl.se slash truerel. I say truerel, that's how I try to pronounce it. It's a difficult word otherwise to say. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, it's actually been 30 days since the previous release. We don't have any particular release cadence with Truerel. We just, I just do the releases when I think it's about time. So we've done a few quick ones, uh, a few slower ones. This is 0 0.15. So I think we're uh, roughly at 15 releases after these 516 days since the first work started on Truerel in uh, March last year. And this time we have uh, participation from three, or th I think it's actually four, um, because I merged another f PR. So we're, we're in um, four authors this time and uh, 30, I think, in total. And in particular, what we did this time, um, over the last, I mean, the, most of the Truerel development happened in, in the first few months, I think. So it has established itself as sort of the basic functionality is there and it seems to be rather stable and working. This time I converted the man page to ma markdown, which I did mostly to get it in a more convenient format for people to edit and read as is. So you can easily, I mean, we can render it, you can watch it on GitHub, you can see it in the text editor and stuff like that. So it's easier to work with really. One downside is of course that right now when I did it really, um, so the, the releases I've done so far, they've been just packaging the thing on GitHub or you know, making a release on GitHub. So I take advantage of that GitHub putting it in the tarball. But that means that there's no more uh, man page and rough version of the man page in the release. So starting with the next release, I'm going to generate tarballs for the release. So then I will generate an NROF version of the man page for everyone who wants one. Anyway, so there's no NROF version in this release. So there will be another release soon. Anyway, so now uh, Truel will normalize, uh, quote unquote, what I call the query part and the path part of a URL. And, and, and what I mean with that is if you provide, for example, you know, percent encoded sequences in the query or in the path, then they can be represented in a sort of more convenient way. Like if you do percent 61 or percent 42, they're just the ASCII versions of Latin alphabet characters. So if, if you use them in a URL, Truerel will output the just the ASCII version of the letters instead of the percent encoded versions for the query part and the path part. It already did this for the host name part. And one of the reasons for doing that is that it made it easier for a few of the commands like the trim uh, option didn't really work if you provided uh, the query uh, percent encoded. Now, so it improved the query function. No, the trim com, uh, option and a few others actually. And now we also accept control codes in GET and JSON output. And with what I mean with that is, if you, for example, if you have a URL with percent encoded control codes, and that is totally fine. For example, you can have example.com slash percent 13 or some, something, you know, below 20 hex. With the, they are control codes in the ASCII table, and it's really hard for anyone to actually output them in, in, in something. But now uh, Truerel will do that for you if that is what the URL contains. You can, of course, also ask Truerel to output the URL encoded version if you prefer to not have them 
you know, risk them being control codes or, you know, carriage return and line feed could also be used in a you know, URL like that and could be complicated to use in a shell script, for example. We fixed the replace option to URL encode the provided data arguments. That's, that is, you provide them raw and TrueRail will encode them for you. Pretty much how all the other options already work. So that was sort of, that is the assumption really. When, when most commands in with TrueRail, they work on raw strings and they encode them for you. So you don't have to care about, you don't have to think about the URL encodings. I, we introduce a new prefix for gets. So for example, you can now ask for a part of the URL with a must colon prefix and then TrueRail will return error if that component doesn't exist. So for example, if you you want to ex extract the query part um, and fail if there is no query part, then you can use this prefix to do that. <clears throat> or for all the parts, really. Some parts, I guess, can't be missing, like the host name. Ah. Anyway. That's, that's the way you can do it. Um, and I also, re <laughs> we introduced this command line option not long ago called dash dash force replace, but I now renamed it to dash dash replace append because I think it's a much better name because it more explains what it actually does. So dash dash replace is a command line option for replacing a part of the query um, and replace append is for replacing or appending that part in the query for a URL. <clears throat> the old name still works, but I've sort of hidden it so it's not documented anymore. It's not. It's in the code. We actually test for it as well. But the new version of the command line option is dash dash replace append. And I wanted to just emphasize that one of the reasons why I still ship zero dot something release version numbers for this tool is that I actually still consider this to be a pre-version one. So there, I want to have the right to actually break functionality or, you know, backwards compatibility if we really need to. So that's, that's why I still haven't done the uh, 1.0 release, even though I've been meaning to, and I've been planning to do a 1.0 release. But right now, I don't know exactly what I need to push me into doing that. So we'll see. Anyway, the next one is likely to be then 0 0.16 because I don't think we're going to go uh, version 1 just yet. I don't have any particular plans for what's coming next. Well, I mentioned that I will, I will change the release process a little bit. So I will render tarballs and I will sign them and I will upload them somewhere. So they will be um, more in line with how I do curl releases. And primarily then, because then I can render a man page version of the man page that is now markdown only, but I will render one and put into the release tarball. And I will do that starting soon. I will work on that. <clears throat> Otherwise, I don't have any particular features or bugs pending. So if you have issues or ideas, head over to the GitHub issues page and, and submit them and we'll get to them and work on them and uh, ideally fix it for the future. And that is pretty much what I wanted to tell you about TrueRill today.